This is my workhorse brush. It's a one inch flat synthetic and I have a three quarter and one quarter synthetic and a small kind of longer uh, flat brush too just for the odd job. But you don't need all of those brushes but uh, they're very handy. This, this one I use for bigger jobs but mostly just for wetting paper. It's a two inch flat brush. And it'll be uh, very useful for uh, just quickly wetting a large area. Or if I was working on a full sheet, I'd probably use it for painting, which I've done. Now, it, the flat brushes, in, in uh, addition to the natural way they're going to work with vertical and horizontal lines, you can scrub and push them around and get really nice kind of loose effects that don't actually, uh, oh, that's my, my uh, three-quarter, but these effects, you don't see any corners if you handle the brush right, twisting it and, uh, and pushing it. It doesn't have to just leave those square rectangular shapes. I find them very useful for this. I think much easier to control than a round brush as well. This small uh, quarter inch is good for various, um, you know, fencing and barn structures and uh, twisting it gives you different uh, size lines and marks. And the flat brush held on a very shallow angle, it just skims across the surface of the paper, gives you a nice texture if you're doing coarse subject. It's, it's just a good idea to take these brushes and, and uh, practice. Now this is the longer one. It's more of a calligraphy free brush if you like to do uh, more sweeping curves and whatnot. It, it's kind of a sign painter's brush. Some of them are just fun. These are my round brushes, just a variety of sizes. Uh, some of them have uh, a mixture, but most of them are just synthetic. Just two brushes, the same number, but different kind of different sizes. Different companies make different sizes. You can buy a number 10 and made by one manufacturer, and it's different by a number 10 made by a different company. And the round brushes I use for drawing. Okay, this is dry paper, so I'll just get a hard edge shape. And uh, they also, on a, on a steep angle, give you a a little bit of surface texture and a rigger or a liner brush long skinny filaments make obviously long skinny lines or short skinny lines but they release the the wash gradually so you can get quite a skinny line with it these are my uh, specialty brushes mixture of synthetic with a little bit of squirrel hair in some of them and uh, squirrel hair by itself is terrible stuff but put synthetic in it and it gives it spring and some control but the, these oval that's an oval wash squirrel hair mixed with uh, synthetic and i just want to show you how much it holds it it uh, you keep it very full and drop the the paint on and leave it very, it'll leave puddles. So it's a very lush looking end result. You don't really want a painting to look like it's stingy and scraped with a dry brush. Unless you're going for those specialty textures. This is a dagger brush and it really is hard to control. So it gives you a very loose look, maybe even when you don't want it but it'll bounce all over the place. It's kind of a fun brush. These aren't essentials. This is a small wash, oval wash, and it holds a lot too. You can load it up and just tap it, and it just splashes. It's, it holds so much that it just springs out of the brush when you tap the ferrule. 
But if you're a beginner, those are the only two kinds of brushes you need, one round and one flat, suited to the size of paper.